healed, delivered, set free. The word of God spread throughout the nations. So when you're in one accord with the Lord, you can truly do all things. JC Marriage Life like album on this channel. What are you doing with your life? Like, go ahead and check it out the playlist. There's a lot of good messages from the Lord on there. Um, so today I just put this on my heart legit like a few moments ago. Um, just about being on one accord. So we're gonna be diving into what the Lord wants for us all to hear on tonight. And um, we're gonna be talking, of course, about how it's been for us in our first two years of two marriage. Years. Wow. Ah, happy anniversary, honey. Happy anniversary. This is God such is so a good. blessing. Yes. We're so excited. Yes. We were married. If you're if you're new to our channel, God bless you for joining in. Don't forget to like, subscribe to this YouTube channel. We talk about Jesus Christ, the Holy Spirit is welcomed, and the, of course, Father God is glorified in this video. We talk about um, natural hair, beauty, life vlogs, and of course marriage <laughs> um so if you um if you're new here we uh courted um and then we got married seven seven seventeen so officially two years on today but of course you're watching on the eighth which is monday um but yeah today we were married two years and i'm wow. super excited it's just like god you're so good and uh, we were given the date for our wedding i want to say three months before or was it four months before god just yeah. gave us the date and he confirmed it at our engagement photo shoot because in my i'm gonna show a picture oh, yeah. i'm gonna show a picture um this is not this is only god because in the exact picture my husband's watch said 707 yeah, exactly like that's not the Jesus. Like, exactly, like, right at that time. So, I'm going to insert the picture so y'all can see, like, that confirmed to us. Like, okay, Lord, this is the day you want. And it's just been a beautiful married life, and I'm glad we did it God's way. Yes. So. God's way is always the best way. Amen. Yay. All right. So, let's go ahead and pray in, and then let the Holy Spirit have his way. So, of course, any prayer requests, any questions, comments, hello, don't hesitate, just put them down below in the comment section, or if you would like to email us, then it's butterflyambassadors at yahoo.com. All right, let's pray in. Heavenly Father, we love you. Jesus Christ, we adore you. Holy Spirit, you are welcome forever in our lives, Father God. Lead us in this video. Replace Jaleesa and Carlton's words with your words, Father God. May the Bible just be our guide and our tool so that others can know more about you. May the marriages that you have formed together on this beautiful earth, Father God, may they glorify you, Father. May this video provide a outlet of wisdom, outlet of love, outlet of encouragement to young couples that are just believing to be married, Lord, or they're already married and they're just believing God um, just for um, communication to you know grow and be strengthened so that they can be on one accord in the name of Jesus so father we just thank you for this testimony we thank you for this covenant that you have formed together we thank you father God for this marriage father God. we pray that you are always glorified through our marriage father God that you are adored and that you are worshiped father God we just thank you Lord we just thank you we're so excited for what is to come in year three ahead and father have your way God there's none like you on this earth, you are the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning, the end, the way. And we just thank you, Father, for what you're doing in this season in our lives, Father. So have your way. May people know who you are through this video, Father. May people repent and turn back to you, Father, God, through this video, Father. May people just see your love and just see your goodness and see your truth in the name of Jesus. So, Father, have your way, Lord Jesus. I pray in the name of Jesus that we decrease, Father, so that you get all the increase in the name of Jesus. So, Father, have your way. Speak through us. Speak through us, Lord Jesus. Speak, Father, in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Amen. All right, you guys, let's get started. So, simple, simple, simple. Um, God just gave me this title, and my husband felt God's presence and 
where here we are. So the title is Being on One Accord. Do you want to start on just that title alone, or would you like me to go to the points, baby, or would you like? Well, we can go straight to it, but I guess going into it, One Accord is so important, and you can see we are One Accord, because we couldn't do this video right now, we were not One Accord, let's give you a clue. So it's two of us now, but we are on one accord. So I guess that's a little clue before we go into it. So. Amen. So how is marriage after two years? Wow. Marriage after two years <laughs> is wonderful because we're doing it God's way. And, and after two years, it's just, it just, you just realize more about yourself and, and more revelation. And you're like, you know what? We started with God and God's with us the whole time. And, so therefore, it's like we, you get to see the benefits of God. So to all those that may have spoke to us before we got married, they had all sorts of opinions outside of God. Amen. Well, we've learned, you know, with God, you can do all things. So with God, you have a great marriage. With God, you have blessings yes. and blessings. And, and you can receive what God has for you. You can see all the, the fruits and all, all the promises of God. It's just... That's what a godly marriage is. Two years, it's a wonderful thing. Marriage can be wonderful from day one, from month one to, to year one, yeah. year two, year five. Like, marriage can be wonderful if you do it God's way. So that's what I'm saying after two years. After two years, I still say what I said way back when, is that keep God first, do it God's way, you won't regret it. I agree completely. Like, I know a lot of times, like, the I'm the natural side, so... I don't know there's people that are probably like, well, so-and-so said that this is going to happen, and so-and-so said that, look, honey, your marriage can be beautiful. It can be wonderful. You just can't allow others to speak death over your marriage. So for us, when we were courting, we came to each other, and we said, look, we are not going to receive that earthly trend that the first two years of marriage are bad or horrible you argue and it's just bad it's just you know the worst two years we just told each other we're not going to accept that we're not going to receive that we are going to have a blessed two years five years we just we just said we're going to have that we spoke life into our marriage before the covenant even happened so I just challenge you and encourage you, um, especially if you're courting right now, if you're in the engagement process, or if you have just like did the um, premarital counseling um, with your um, pastor, then I strongly encourage you to speak life over your marriage. Speak li like the, the, the thing that's so beautiful about marriage is that it's a three chord. It's between you, your spouse, and God. The outside people, mm. I, I'm not saying you isolate yourself from everybody, but I, what I am saying is that you protect your covenants, and that's what the Holy Spirit, you know, you pray over your marriage, you speak life over your marriage, you read the word of God together, you pray together, so that you can always be on one accord, because within your first two years of marriage, you're learning each other. It's just like riding a bike. You know, you gotta you gotta get up and get on the bike and just keep pedaling. You may fall a little bit. You know, you may kind of oh, gotta get in balance. The first two years is fun because you're learning each other. You know, like the first two years is that moment where you're kind of understanding like how you both are. Your first time living together. You know, because we definitely had to learn in each other what each other likes. Um, you're learning. You know. You know, who likes to do laundry, who doesn't, you know, who, you know, who wants to do different things, um, our alone time, you know, like if you want to just read a book, because I love to read, my husband's super amazing with like video games, so like, you know, just understanding our alone time, um, like how to operate that and how to do that diligently, and then also worship time, you know, learning like, you know, our strengths and weaknesses, you know, learning, you know, what areas, like, if, if I'm tired, knowing, okay, God, I'm going to stir myself in the Lord, I'm going to encourage myself, and I'm going to, you know, worship in the name of Jesus, you know, so just understanding, you know, each other and talking, I think that's one of the biggest, and we're going to get to the point right now. So, this is the first point with a successful marriage, especially in your first two years of marriage. The first point is clear communication. I believe clear communication is 
golden. It's vital. It's as necessary as air is as we're breathing air right now. Like, clear communication is gold. Because you can communicate, but what are you really saying? So I believe clear communication, and I'm going to give you an example. So if I would love, uh, let's see. Okay, if I would love a foot rub, you know what I'm saying? Like, got off work, and just one of, the, one of the days where I'm like, Lord, I would love a good foot rub. I would communicate with my husband before I get home. Like, I would like, um... We call each other once I get out of work. So I call him and be like, babe, hey, you know, we ask each other, how are we doing? How was our day? We pray for each other. And then of course I would say, babe, you know, when do you have free time? See, that's the thing. It's not, it's not, when you clearly communicate, it's the way you say things too. So it's not just what you're saying, but it's how you're saying it. So I would, for example, be like, babe, you know, when you have free time, I would love a foot rub. Simple. He knows what I would like. And I even said it in his free time. So it's not like I'm demanding him to do it or I'm not like saying, can you rub my feet? You know, like, no, it's just in your, your free time. I would love a foot rub. Now, of course, my husband is like super amazing. Of course, he's willing and, you know, he is so kind to just do it as soon as I get home. But it's just that clear communication that I respect his time off work too because he's still a man that has been out all day working hard. Um, so it's just that clear communication that I understand you have work too. So I'm not saying that, you know, I'm not saying like you don't deserve food rub either because I would be happy to massage his whole body. But like I'm just expressing like it, when you're free, it would be awesome to have food rub. So that's one example. Anything you want to add to clear communication? Well, one thing I'll add to that, and that was an excellent point, by the way. One thing i add to that is going you know going to the you know the topic which is being on one accord is you can't be on one accord as a couple if you don't communicate so right. say for example is like to to communicate things you know so that for example communicate as you said like communicating how laundry is going to be done communicating how cooking is going to be done communicating how different things are going to be done so you can be on one accord because if you don't communicate certain things, you could be divided. So wow. that's that's how you're on one accord, or should I say like the same accord, like being one, like being one is just communicating so that you both know what's what. Because let's say for example, one person, one person, one person, you know what you're thinking. So you know what to do because you know what you're thinking. But if you have a husband and a wife, your your wife may not know exactly what what's on your mind, so you got to say the, these thoughts so she'll know. Mm -hmm. Vice versa, the husband may not know certain thoughts, but once you convey them, now both of you can be two. It's, the Bible says two become one flesh. Mm -hmm. So now the two, husband and wife, can be one flesh yeah. and be on one accord. But if you don't communicate certain things, like how you're feeling or, or like what, what God's telling you, to do like as the husband like if, if God share with you what the plan is what what the goal is um you know for the marriage but you don't share it with the wife she can't be on one accord with you so that's so share. good baby I love that so just to kind of sum up that first point friends um what is so amazing about communicating clearly is that you are best friends so it's like what's so beautiful about it is that you understand each other better because you how would you understand your spouse if you're not talking to him like put it put it this way if we were to go for a week i, I couldn't do this mm. but if we were to go through a whole week without saying nothing to each other i'd, I'd probably cry every day like i i I don't understand how, like, I don't, I can't even picture myself not talking to my husband every day. Like, I, that's, it just doesn't make sense. To, like, it doesn't, to me, it doesn't make sense. Like, that's what is so beautiful about clearly communicating. And I'm not saying you have to over-communicate, um, 
but I'm saying you do need to clearly communicate. Like, you don't have to repeat yourself, ladies, but I'm saying you can at least say, hey, babe, you know, I'm leaving work. Would you like anything from the store while I'm out? You know, like something like that instead of when you get home from work and you see there's nothing, you know, in the refrigerator and you're upset because he didn't tell you that there was no dinner there and you're upset like all you have to do is just call him and say hey babe what's in the refrigerator i'm on the way home what can i stop and get on the way home or something that you need like it's just being intentional which you're going to our second point but it's just being intentional about you know um seeing what's up or as simple as the trash like okay in the beginning of your marriage just communicate like what are your strengths and weaknesses like there's some women that take up the trash out. There's nothing wrong with that. But I'm saying you communicate what would you like to do. Like, we're a team. So it's not like that's women's work, that's man's work. Like, no, we're one flesh. You know, we're one. So it's like, if you would like to do this, babe, then I'm going to do this, babe. You know, if you would like to do this, babe, then I... Like, for me, I love to cook. But my husband's really good at cooking, too. So... I just love to cook, so he's okay with me cooking, vice versa, with cleaning. My husband cooks great, but I just love to clean. So he's like, okay, babe, you got that. I'll do the clothes. I'll fold the clothes. You put them in, I'll fold, or I'll put them in and he folds. Like, we just kind of have that team effort. Bathroom, I love to clean, so I got the bathroom. Like, closet, I got that vacuum. I love to vacuum. Like, I just love to do those things. Um, so it's just, it's just like simple, like, it sounds like <laughs> it sounds like childish but like it's just simply just asking the spouse what do you like to do it's just simple as that it's just like you know would you like me um you know to wash the clothes and you wash the dishes or would you like me to do both like for me i prefer my husband um we talked about it i just prefer my husband to make sure the gas is like good because I don't like getting the gas especially if it's at night I just prefer my husband do that because of course I'm a woman and of course I just he just does a better job than me <laughs> I mean he's just you know he's just really good at about finding the right gas station good prices and he's just really good about that me I just go anywhere I see a gas station I just fill up but he's really good about finding the good and expensive ones that'll fill us up for a cheaper price so it's just stuff like that you just you just find out ways that will just help you guys. Groceries, I'm the keeper of the home, so girlfriend, I am here for the groceries. And then like for um, bills, my husband, we both are really good at just talking about them and just writing it down. I let's write it down, he'll tell me what it is and I write it down and we'll pay it together. I mean, it's just simple stuff, just like talking about it. We can have a different video for just like bills or like that. But for this, you have to communicate. Like, that's the number one thing. Now, for the touchy areas, um, because you guys, some of you guys know a little bit about my testimony, um, but for those that you, but for those that don't, of course, email me, I'll tell you later time. But for me, like, when it comes to the touchy areas that are just, like, sensitive for me, my husband is phenomenal when it comes to hearing everything that I say as I am speaking, and he will wait and he'll just kind of interject once I'm finished and he'll ask questions and just ask how am I feeling he'll pray with me you know he'll go to the word with me he, you know he'll just hug me sometimes he's just phenomenal with holy spirit like he'll just bear witness of holy spirit and he'll just hug me you know there's just he understands me so for you when the situation the topics are like touchy it's really really key guys to make sure that you can identify what your spouse needs at that particular time. You know, he may not need you to just say all these things. Like, he may just need you to just hug him. He may just need you to just hold his hand. Like, I am big on holding hands, you know. He may just need you to just hold his hand or just, like, just hug him or just tell him he's an amazing husband. Tell him that you're in his corner. Tell him that you are here for him, you know, if we have two minutes to our name. Because that's something that I would say all the time because I'm serious. Like, even if we... We're blessed, but I'm just saying, even if we had two planes to our name, I'm here for, I'm here. I'm here to eternity. So Jesus calls me home, you know, I'm here. And sometimes you have to just do that. Like, you just remind your spouse, you're here, you care. Like, you are here, like, you support them, you respect them. Ladies, respect is so huge with our husbands. So you communicate that. 
You know, it's not about ego. No, you're just telling your husband, your best friend, that you respect him, that you love him, that you are here for him, that you are his dog. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is my dog. Like, this is my best friend. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's my dog. You know, so I think that's like the number one thing that is just like social media is annoying. I think as married couples, be intentional. Just talk. Like, you know, you don't have to watch TV every night. You know what I'm saying? Like, just talk. We we'll like to play Uno. We'll play games on our phone together. You know what I'm saying? Like, just talk. Just ask each other, like, where you want to travel. You know, like, um, what do you want to ever do your hair a different color? Just talk. Just enjoy each other. This life is so precious. Enjoy your marriage. Okay. So the second part, um, it kind of, I'm going to just put the second and third part together because they're kind of the same thing but the first part says um there's no i in team and then the other part is love one another unconditionally and love one another intentionally so the, those to me go kind of together because oh we're pretty much done well those kind of go together because there's no i in team like it's the three chord strand this marriage this covenant that god's given us it's you your spouse and god I mean, even the Lord Jesus Christ himself, there's a three chord strand in that. Like, there's God the Father, Jesus Christ, and Holy Spirit. That's the perfect example of how your covenant should be. So, God has given us the perfect example from the very beginning, Genesis. So, there's no I in team. There's no, well, I, you know, the house is in my name, so... You know, I make the rules. No, that no, the Lord didn't say that should. Um, and there's no like, well, I, you know, birth these babies out, so I deserve this, this, that, and the third. And I deserve it. like no, should the Lord gave you the ability in your body to birth those babies? You know what I'm saying? Like you didn't do that. You know, like God actually gave you your body. Like you didn't create yourself. So we have to get out of this pride and this like. Who it's like the possession. It's like the spirit of just like me, 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 me. Like, no, Shug. Actually, the Lord actually gave you that blessing, that miracle that you're complaining about right now. You know, it's not like a you thing. So, friends, there's no I in team. Like, your covenant is you, your spouse, and Jesus, the Holy Spirit, and God. That's the perfect example. Because... Within your marriage, you don't want ever, please don't do this, ladies. Like, you don't want to tear down your spouse. That's the enemy. That's the enemy's territory. We don't want no parts of that. We're not a part of the father of lies. No? Make sure you understand what team that you really are in your spiritual journey. That's a whole other video. But um, you want to make sure that you are building up your spouse because you're a team. So if, so, if, if your husband's going through a season right now, where it's just hard for him, it's tough for him. Like he's, you know, struggling with his identity. He's struggling with being the man that God wants him to be. He's struggling with finances. He's struggling with, you know, becoming a father. Like you guys have been trying for a long time, and he just feels like, Lord, like when will we be parents? Like everybody else is being parents, and what you know, what about us? You're just going through the season. Build him up. Encourage him. You know, like send him cute little notes. Like I love to write my husband like little notes, like old school. You know what I'm saying? Um, if I could, I probably would do it one day. He won't even expect mm -hmm. it. But like you know, back in the day, we used to write those little notes. Be like, check this box yes or no. Do you like me? Do you like me or you don't like me? I'm gonna probably do that. I'm surprising oh, you guys. Yeah. But like, go back to those days where you were just like fresh. You know, you're just like, I think he's cute. You know, go back to those days like with your husband. Like woo your spouse. The wooing don't stop, y'all. It just gets greater and greater and greater. You know what I'm saying? So, like, with the, you know, no I in team, Shug, if your spouse is going through that season that's just very tough for them, and of course, it's a growing season because God wants to mature them in a certain area, but you want to encourage them, you know, because you are a part of that growth. You are a part of that maturity. You know, it's your attitude that will help your spouse grow farther, will grow even quicker because of how you handle it, how your attitude is about it. Do you pray for him? Like, do you pray, like, consistently? Do you pray, like, like with fervent, like, fervent prayer? Like, you know, do you really, like, pray for your spouse, you know? 
Um, I feel like that's a whole other video too, but it's really, really important to pray for your spouse because we're not men, ladies, you know, like we are women, you know what I'm saying? We were, you know, so blessed, you know, to be a part of God's creation. And it's really important for us to be submissive, to, to be the keeper of the home, you know, to, to be the helpmeet that God wants us to be. We are to help him fulfill the the plans and the mission that God has him on to fill fulfill the calling that God has on his life that's a lot of pressure ladies so we are here to be that that tree leader you know we're rooting for him you know we're saying baby you got this you can do all things through the Christ that you're to you are a man man of Valerie like I believe in you I trust you like you have such great intentions for this family I value you like I respect you I am here for you which one, which one I'm going to cook? Like, I'm down for you. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's how it's supposed to be. So, I don't know how we got away from that with social media and all these movies and all this, like, craziness from the enemy, all these lies from the him and the way the enemy works, those darts thrown and all these things. But I am here to tell you, women of God, there's no I in team. Love your spouse unconditionally. Don't withhold sex from him just because he didn't wash your car like girl you can wash your own car you know like don't like make these like made up rules like even my purse said amen the purse mm. fell over like don't make these like rules where like if he doesn't do xyz then i'm not i'm not i'm hanging and then and not like what that's so prideful that's so arrogant because the word of god says that your body is not even your own it belongs to your husband so who are you to deny your husband sex that's like you telling yourself you're not going to worship to God because sex is worship to God. So there's no way in team. Love one another unconditionally and love one another intentionally. And then add baby because I know I talked in a long time. Oh, it's, it's, I it's really felt up, passionate baby. about those two comments. <laughs> oh, it's, it's, it, it's good stuff, baby. You know, it's, you know, it's so, so many good things. It's, you know, unconditionally and intentionally and then it was the, the first part the first part I want to get to that which had the right part the no first I part. team yes that part the no I team is and just another way to word it is what you're doing like you're no longer single like once you're married like it's the difference between when you're single when you're single of course everything you do is for the Lord but as far as for a human being when you're single it's, it's for you it's like when you pray Lord this is my prayer for me in my life right. but when, when when you're married like you said it's no longer I so now Lord if you do everything for me that's great but I also need you to do, do things for my wife mm -hmm. or for the women do things for my husband because if you do everything for me and don't do anything for my, my wife then that's not completing the our team right. I mean so let's go to sports any sports team you need everybody on that team to function or else the whole team is not functioning as a whole That's so good. let's go to a car let's say every let's say three tires function great but one tire does not you need that one tire that so, so that's why it's, it's no it's like you you need your husband or you need your wife you are one you need each other so that's why you don't want to be selfish. It's not, well, I got something to eat. Well, your, your wife needs something to eat too. Amen. Well, um, I, I'm okay with my spiritual life. Well, they need to be okay too. Exactly. You know, so I'll just add that. And plus, let's not forget, the state that your partner's in will affect you. Ooh, so good. if they're not right spiritually, even if you're the strongest, you're, you're being affected because you're one. You're one. And we're talking about being on one accord. So since you're one, anything that, you know, so you want to know that as you take care of them, you're taking care of yourself. So be selfless mm -hmm. to help yourself. That makes Ooh, sense. that's so good. And I want to go ahead and go to um, the Tower of Babel. Yes. And then we can finish the last point and then we'll be finished. So I'm going to be reading from... Genesis chapter 11, 1 through 9, and then babe, I'll let you take this because you did such a wonderful job of saying this to me when we did our Bible study time together. So I'm going to read um, Genesis chapter 11, um, verses 1 through 9. And the whole earth was of one language and of one speech. Praise God. 
And it came to pass as they journeyed from the east that they found a plain in the land of Shinar, and they dwelt there. And they said one to another, Go to, let us make brick, and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone, and slime had they for mortar. And they said, Go to, let us build us a city and a tower whose top may reach unto heaven. And let us make us a name, lest we be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. Verse 5. And the Lord came down mm. to see the city and the tower which the children of men builded. Verse 6. And the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, and they have all one language. And this they begin to do. And now nothing will be restrained from them which they have imagined to do. Verse 7, my favorite part. Go to, let us mm. go down, and there confound their language, that they may not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from thence upon the face of all the earth, and they left off to build a city. Therefore is the name of it called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of all the earth and from thence did the lord scatter them abroad upon the face of all the earth in jesus name amen and just to go into some of this going into our topic which is being on one accord like just starting just kind of bringing it down so when it says and the whole earth was of one language and of one speech that's saying that they were on one accord yep you know, they were one, one language, one speech, okay? Now, and then, of course, you know, not to just reiterate everything back to you, but going to the, to the, next, to the next part, um, the people, the people came together, and it says, and they said one to another, go to, let us make brick, and burn them thoroughly, and they had brick and stone and slime, they made from mortar. Then they said, let us, let us build a city, in a tower whose top may reach unto heaven and let us make unto us a name mm. at least we'll be scattered abro abroad upon the face of the whole earth so they wanted to make a name for themselves so they want to do it didn't say god told us to or let's please god or let's ask god if it's okay right they got together and they said let us do this thing because we want to so we can make a name for ourselves now so this was a natural, it was not for God to make a name for themselves so they could be famous, so they could be known. Mm. Remember, wow. God is all about making his name glorified. Amen. He's God, you know. We do everything for God. We don't, we don't take the glory, we give it to him. Yeah. God wants the glory. The enemy wants the glory for himself. When the enemy was thrown out of heaven, it's because he wanted the glory. Mm -hmm. So what's one pattern of the enemy? If you want to be able to identify the enemy, identify somebody trying to take the glory. Wow. And you identify the spirit of the enemy. Mm. It could be in sports. It could be entertainment. Yep. If somebody so wants the media. glory, but if they don't give it to God, they're taking the glory. So here the enemy is, is in them trying to get them to, to take the glory for themselves. Because wow. if they build this city and if they can do this apart from God... They did it. And for history and history, well, guess what? They did it. They didn't need God. They did it by themselves. Why do we need God? You know? So this is why God came down and made sure it didn't happen. Of course, it says, um, it says in verse, uh, verse 5, And the Lord came down to see the city and the tower which the children of men built it. Mm -hmm. And then verse 6, and the Lord said, Behold, the people is one, remember, one accord. And they have all one language, one accord. And this they began to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them, which they have imagined to do. You know the scripture says we can do all things uh, through Christ which strengthens us. And there's many places in the Bible which implies we have it, God has given us strength. God is giving us the tools to be like him. He created us in his image. Since we're in his image, we can do all things. You know, so God sees it. He's okay, these people are on one accord. These people are together. So God is saying, when you're on one accord, 
when you're not divided, you are at the full potential that God made you to be. Amen. He made us to be on one accord. God is on one accord. Yeah. Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one accord. That's so good. Because it says in verse 7, go to, let us go us. down. This is God talking. Yes. Father, God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit, Spirit all talking, saying, let us let us go down. So this is showing God is on one accord. Yep. Now, this is where we go to some deepness here. Let's let's uh, let us go down and there confound their language that they may not understand one another's speech. So good. So, God is saying here, if I can found if I can found their language, if I make it so they can't communicate, then they won't be in one accord. Maybe we just talked about earlier about communication. Mhm. Mm so God did this for them as a punishment. Yeah. But the enemy wants to make people not communicate so they can't be who they really are. Mm -hmm. That's He's the difference. He tries. So if the enemy does it for evil, God did this actually for their good. Because right. if he didn't stop them, they were going to do evil. That's exactly. the difference here. So communication is so important. So with the language, so this was so basically we all spoke one language back in this time. Mm -hmm. After this, there was different languages right. because you're in different parts of the world. Like Spanish, Chinese, Russian, like Bosnian, like all the different languages that we have on Earth. This is how it started. So imagine different languages, but no technology of translation, no right. books. All you know, you speak a different language. Mm -hmm. So, so you're not on one accord, which goes right on, right along with the lesson. Now, with the people being on, being not on one accord. They were confound and they could not do their goal. Mm -hmm. So that's why it says in verse 9, the place it says, Therefore the name of it shall be called Babel, because the Lord did there confound the language of the earth, and from thence did the Lord scatter them abroad upon the face of the earth. Babel. Like when somebody babbles, they're not talking like about anything. Like when a baby is like trying to get their first like cooing sounds, like they're trying to get their first words. We always say that the baby's babbling. Or if somebody's saying something that don't they don't need to be saying, they're not making any kind of sense. We say babbling, like rambling, like you know. So here we see this, and one of the main things is not only were these people not on one accord with each other. They were not in one accord with God. Wow. So as a Christian, wow. Christians are one accord with God. Yeah. So even married couples be one accord with each other and be one accord with God. So be good. on one accord. So good. So that's what I say as a generality here, but would you add any more points to? Mm -hmm. Just the last thing? point, and then I have one more point, and then we'll pray out, you guys. But um, I just wrote this in my notes just because it's just so powerful about the story about the Bible. Um, I just put that pride influenced by the enemy led the people to desire a name greater than the name that was already given to them by God. And I just put, um, out of their own strength, they tried to create a tower that could reach heaven. So it reminds me of the enemy. He's a fallen angel who wanted to be better than God. And because he was kicked out of heaven, he's been trying to manipulate and lie and cause friction. Even um, was able to, you know, try to convince Eve of her identity was lost just by just lying, just deceiving, you know. So then I put down, um, God disciplines his children so that we will need God. God doesn't want us to be prideful. He wants us to be a member of his body so that he can be glorified. Because at the end of the day, our goal as married individuals is for God to be glorified through our marriage, through us being parents, you know, through us in ministry, um, through us in our jobs. We work as unto the Lord, um, even like writing a book or, you know, if you have a T-shirt business, if you are working, even if you're a married couple, if you it you're having a baby he gets the glory for it like that's what um that's what i believe that god wants us to really focus on within our marriages um and the last point is what i have thanked god for um the spirit of hush it goes with <laughs> being on one accord ladies hush let your husband lead let your husband lead he's a wonderful person that god has given is gifted to you let him lead he is the head of household he is the um 
the provider he is the protector you know like let him do what god has called him to do there's power in your husband there's maturity in your husband there is wisdom in your husband trust him you know trust trust him you know like allow him to do what god wants him to do um so the spirit of hush you know can work for men too but in my just in my transparency god i thank you for the spirit of hush because i was that person that i'm very um i'm passionate about organization and like time management like doing this and this the getting this done this done this time and this done this and, and i just learned like within the first month i'm like my bae got it like i trust him like i can just shut up like i don't have to say everything I can let him do what he needs to do. Like, I can trust this guy, you know? Like, shh, 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 shh. Practice that in the morning. Like, when you wake up in the morning, say, thank God for this wonderful day. Thank you, Lord, for who you are. And then to say, God, help me with my mouth to just, you know, shut up. You know what I mean? Like, just hush. You know, let my husband lead this family. Let my husband lead. You know, pray to God to help your heart. Um, one of the books that I love to read is um, The Power of a Praying Woman. I'm going to definitely put that picture somewhere. But I think that's a great book for um, women to read, especially before you get married, while you're married, and then, of course, after you have a baby, of course. But I just really believe that that's like a powerful book just because it's so much insight of the Holy Spirit-led prayers. Um, so I believe that's really, really powerful. Um, but anything in added for a spirit of hush, baby? <laughs> I believe I was transparent. I, I needed that, but... Somebody out there, I pray that blessed you. <laughs> well, I, I, I would just say that it's, it's definitely wisdom because it's knowing when to say something, when not to say something. So definitely, definitely wisdom. Praise the Lord. And then last but not least, um, how can two walk unless they be agreed? That's Amos 3.3. 3. So wow. meditate on that. Meditate on that with your spouse tonight. If you are courting, meditate on that with your significant other. And if you're in a season of singleness, meditate on that with yourself. Are you walking together with God? Do you know your purpose with him? Do you know who he is? Are you content with Christ alone? Are you idolizing marriage? Are you envying others? Like, are you in a place of jealousy? Like, are you content with who God has made you to be? Who's called you to be? Are you walking from your calling? Are you sitting on your gifts? You know, like... How can two walk unless they be agreed? So meditate on that tonight. I pray that blessed you. Anything you want to add, baby? I'll just add one, one last thing. So we talked about the, the Tower of Babel mm -hmm. and how that was natural and how they did that against God. Yeah. But let's go to the opposite. The opposite is in the book of Acts on the day of Pentecost. They were all on one accord. They all came together, but they did it for God. God told them to go on one accord. And then, as they went together, God gave them the gift of tongues. Wow, because that's so they were good. One accord. So what we're seeing is, when you're one accord for the Lord, you can truly do everything He's called you to do. And those people, you know, the the, the disciples and the apostles at that time, they went out, and then people were saved, touched, healed, delivered, set free. The word of God spread throughout the nation. So when you're in one accord with the Lord, you can truly do all things. That was beautiful, baby. Because I thought about that um, earlier today when we had Bible study. Like the fact that when you're praying in the Spirit, when God gives you that gift of speaking in tongues and praying, in, oh my gosh, there's so much power. Amen. Like it, it, when you, of course, when a, within a couple, it's powerful. But how amazing is that when, like, in a church that honors the Lord, that is Holy Spirit-led, you know, praising the Spirit together, it's like mountains move. Like, God dwells, and, like, it's just, like, things happen. Like, chains are falling. Like, you know, you can really, like, do God's work when you all are on our one accord within your church family. Um, so that, oh, that is so good that you brought that up, baby. Because that about... Like, when God gives you the gift of praying in tongues, they, you can be, like, different nationalities, but there's that one tongue that the Lord will receive. Like, he receives the heavenly language. long as, you know, you're being Holy Spirit led, you're not playing. Please don't pray. Please don't play with the, the spirit of tongues. Please don't do that. But when you are being led with the Holy Spirit and you are allowing him to flow through you, because he gives you the tongue. You don't have to make it perfect and, like, try to say it like anybody else. No, no. 
you let the Holy Spirit work through you and let him bear witness and let him just do it. You just be a vessel. You know, you just let him speak through you. You know, like, it doesn't have to sound like somebody else. Like, my husband, we don't have, our tongues don't sound like each other. You know, we have different sounding tongues, but the heavenly language is what God receives. And that's what I believe, like you were saying, the opposite. Like, when God works in you and works within you and through you, he will be glorified. Heavenly Father, I just pray in the name of Jesus that you receive this word. I pray that it was sown on fertile ground. Father, have your way. I pray that people have heard you, and I pray that they have understood what you are saying on today. Father, I pray that this helps their marriages. I pray this helps their courtship and their engagement process, and even their season of singleness, Father. So, Lord, have your way. We love you. We adore you. God, there's none like you on this earth, Lord Jesus. Thank you for reminding us to be on one accord with you, Father. Thank you for allowing us to understand what it means to be in a covenant, a three-strand cord, Father, with you, Father. So we thank you, Lord Jesus, for helping us to do all that you call us to do. And we thank you for this, Father God, in Jesus' most precious name. Amen. Amen. All right, guys, I love you guys. I'm praying for you. Know that we love you guys. Um, God, we're just going on the Lord. Thank you for all your sweet comments, your sweet notes, and your your emails about our anniversary. Thank you guys so much. That was so sweet. Um, we love you guys. Don't forget to subscribe and like our YouTube channel. And we will see you guys in the next video. Have a blessed, blessed week. And we'll see you then.